Right, we're gonna get cracking. Now, most of this question is fairly straightforward, but there is this one bit that a lot of people just sort of looked at it sideways. And fair enough, um, it's one of those questions where these are, these are really important questions. I've talked about this before. That you can sort of go one, two, three. I'll say this really carefully. Without deeply understanding what's going on. Like you can just go through steps. And we've done these so many times that you recognize the pattern. But when you get to part C, that pushes on. Do you, can you be thoughtful about this and not just like go through the, just go through your step by step algorithm? So first, let's get the easy parts out of the way, and then we will, um, and then we'll tackle the interesting part. Okay. So there's your equation: one plus x all squared times e to the negative x. Good morning. Good to see. And. To find the intercepts, well, there's the x-intercepts and the y-intercept, right? So let's give this a crack. How do I find the x-intercepts? Y equals zero. zero. So I'm going to set it out like this. For x-intercepts, y equals zero, which means y equals zero. So this thing equals zero, right? In other words, 1 plus x all squared e to the negative x equals zero. OK? Come in. Take a seat, please. Now, um, minor note here, certainly not the most important thing about the question, but it's, it's worth saying. At this point here, I think it's kind of handy to say, like, you've got two factors here. Well, you kind of have three, right? You've got 1 plus x, you've got 1 plus x again, and then you've got e to the negative x. Now, I'm about to ignore the e to the negative x in a second. I'm going to treat it as not part of the question. The reason why is because it doesn't contribute anything, it can never contribute anything to solving this equation. Why is that? Why is it? Very good, e to the negative x, right? We know what this looks like. This is e to the x, it just climbs off. So e to the negative x is different in that it's flipped horizontally because the negative is on the x, right? Morning. So it's coming down like this, it's asymptotic to the x-axis, but it never actually collides, okay? So I'm gonna say at this point, but, Either negative x is never equal to zero, at least for real values. So therefore, I can just say, look, this is the part that I'm interested in. This is the part that's actually going to give me some solutions. Okay. So this is 13c. Yep. It's not B. 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 Okay. Thank you. Come here. Take a seat. Okay. So, are you with me so far? Yep. Track along. Okay. Excellent. So now I have an x intercept. No problem. I'm going to save you a bit of time because I think you know what to do here. For the y intercept, let x equal zero, and you're going to get for a memory y equals one. You pop that in. You can have a look at that. Uh, one plus zero all squared times e to the zero, which is one. It's all, it all comes out. Okay, so that's fine. Let's go to our turning points. So, what do I need to find turning points? I need a oh, derivative, don't I? I need a derivative, so I'll use product rule. I, I kind of am going to use chain rule because I don't want to have to expand that. So it's a simple version of it, though. So the derivative, the first derivative, which is probably all I need, uh, I'm going to read off. Um, got me confused. I'm going to read off product rule just from here with a u and a v, right? U and v. So I'm going to go v. What's u dash? Two times. Good morning. Two times. Hold on. You're on, you're on differentiating this already, right? You I've got v u dash. Oh, I thought you take the first one to come in. Yeah. Well, I'll, I tend to go alphabetical. Uh, I mean, like we've noticed for product rule, it doesn't matter which one's which, right? But it just makes sense to call the first thing u and the second thing v. So it's going to be two times one plus x, right? Okay. There's v u dash, u is just, we just stated what it was. And now we get to v dash, which is negative e to the negative x. Happy? Okay, now where am I going with this? What am I trying to find out of this first derivative? When that equals zero. Yeah, I'm trying to solve that. So I might as well, therefore, factorize as far as I possibly can. Because factorizing, like this, is what makes it easy to solve, right? What can I take out of this? Minus e to the minus okay, I can take out, I could take out a negative sign here, I suppose. But being that it's on the second term, good morning. I think I'm just going to leave him. I'm just going to leave him there. I oh, will take out the e to the negative x. What else can I take? Yeah, the 1 plus x. So let's just like that. The front. 
Be bragging there. Okay, what am I left with? Two. Two. That minus sign comes along for the ride, and there's a one plus x in there. I, I mean, I took out one of them, but there's, there's two. So one plus x is left there. Happy? Okay. So now I can factorize a little more fully, and it looks to me like that's one take away x. Yes? Okay, now, remembering that this is actually not the part of the question that we're focusing on, I think you can see here I'm going to get the two turning points for the same reason that I, I didn't get a solution from this before, that. I'm going to have x equals 1 and negative 1, right? Okay. Now, um, the exact wording of the question says, show that the curve has two turning points and classify them. So I don't actually need to find their y coordinates. I mean, I mean, I can, it's not difficult, but that's not, the question is not asking for the location of these things. I've shown that there's two places where there are stationary points. So what would I need to do from there? Yeah, so I have, I have a couple of choices. I can use the first derivative and do a table of values, okay? Or I can do the second derivative and then I can just test at those points. Which would you prefer? Second, second derivative. That's so young. Looking at this, it's just a squared minus b squared. So this is, um, I could write this in this way. It's still both. I could, I could do, I could do that. Um, honestly, honestly, I kind of feel like this is really on the line. Like I think, and to be honest, I'll just really quickly show you. In a pinch, ta -da, um, I did, I did a table of values, and it's really, it's really not that complicated. Okay, but it's true. Like this is about the same. Good morning. Is about the same ish difficulty of differentiating as this. Right? So it's, it's not that complicated. Okay? Now, whichever way you go about it, and again, because it's not the focus, and it's something you guys have dealt with many times, whether you go by first derivative or second derivative, I believe you'll find, um, let's see, x equals negative 1, I'm pretty sure is a minimum. Which makes this guy a um, maximum. Okay? So obviously that takes a bit of time to establish. You'll do either path, and out will pop your result. 